Hey everybody, and welcome to the next game that I'm going to play, which is War of the Worlds Survival. For those of you who are wondering when the next Jurassic World Evolution video or cinematic will be, don't worry, that will be tomorrow. It's been a very busy week, and making those videos takes a very long time. The script for the next episode is done, the videos have been filmed, uh, now it's just all about editing them together. So for today's video, we'll be doing a uh, pretty unknown game uh, that is uh, pretty interesting, but don't expect the world because this is only made by one person. Now, don't forget as always to um, keep me informed or suggest any other games you would like to see me play on the channel. Uh, last time, Line 24 gave a very good suggestion of a game that takes place in 1939, which is a first-person shooter single-player campaign where you play as the Polish. So there are definitely some gems out there, so let me know any gems you know that you think will be awesome to play here. And as always, please go and check out my long play channel, which is called The Game Archivist. You can find the link to that channel in the description down below. Uh, I have a whole bunch of long plays on there, including also another War of the Worlds game already out. And if you like what you see, then please subscribe to The Game Archivist channel. It really helps me out a lot, and I'll be very thankful if you do. Now, without further ado, please enjoy. No one would have believed in the early years of the 21st century that our world was being watched by intelligences greater than our own. That as men busied themselves about their various concerns, they observed and studied. The way a man with a microscope might scrutinize the creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. With infinite complacency, men went to and fro about the globe, confident of our empire over this world. Yet, across the gulf of space, intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic regarded our planet with envious eyes. And slowly and surely drew their plans against us. All right, guys. War of the Worlds. That segment was definitely taken from the movie, as that was Morgan Freeman. Ugh, not sure if that's uh, okay in a game that you actually sell, but here we go. Chapter 1, Fallen from the Sky. Finally home, my friend Weaver said something strange to me in his last letter. I hope nothing bad. He spends too much time observing the stars with his telescope. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, English um, <laughs> is this game's strong suit. In fact, not a whole lot is this game's strong suit, but there are some interesting things to mention here, so we'll talk through it. Alright, we're here in this town. Oh, what is that? Oh my god, a meteor? This is an awesome event for me. I must go there to see it. I will have you know, I paid money for this game. I paid uh, one dollar or like 90 euro cents. Oh, I crashed. <laughs> that woman walked right through me. Now, I will be doing other War of the Worlds games uh, soon as well. You might not know it, but there are other War of the Worlds games out there. Uh, the next one will be a bit more ambitious. It's also not too good, but a lot better than this. But that one I actually bought on Steam sale for $1.24. So that's only like 24 cents more than this. Ah, right, here we go. Okay, what do we got? What happened here, dude? I don't think it was a meteor. It came down like it had an engine. I'm studying the activities around Mars. The other night I saw something detached from the surface. I think this thing comes from there. They are invading us! Well, this guy uh, seems panicked. It's better to come back to town. Weaver will be exited for this event. I thought this was Weaver, but apparently not. Well, we'll see. So, 
the way this game works, it's not a very long game. Um, I play tested it a bit. It is a survival game, so in a moment we will be invaded and I will be able to free roam. Now, you can see if I run, the stamina bar in the lower left goes down really quickly. If it depletes all the way, this happens. And I won't be able to move for a moment. And so that's actually quite tedious. Now, once the survival uh, phase starts, I do have a little bit more stamina. It is still not enough, but at least we can sprint for a little bit longer. But for this moment, to actually get to the other uh, part of town is a little bit tedious. Now, as I said, I guess it is easy to hate on this game. There's not a whole lot to it. Again, some new elements will be introduced in a moment. Um, but I do think that at the bases, there is potential. It just needs, you know, a bigger team or more of a budget. This is a game made by only one person. Ironically, the other War of the Worlds games that I will be doing soon, which you can already see on my other long play channel, The Game Archivist. I talked about it in the beginning, but again, if you want to see the other War of the World game, or War of the Worlds game, uh, please go to The Game Archivist channel and uh, subscribe to that channel if you like what you see. It does help me out a lot if you do so. I'll be very, very grateful. Okay, actually, um, but yeah, that other game is actually made by two people, so that's double the team. Okay, dear friend, I made a telescope discovery last night. I went to London, oh, okay, I went to London and something... Oh no, the sound comes from the cylinder. Maybe something's happening there. Better go back and see. Uh-oh. More meteors. Oh my god, something strange is going on here. Maybe Weaver knows more about this. Now, um, I have no idea where Weaver is. I can tell you that much. For me, the next phase just started at random. Uh, I don't know where Weaver is. They were talking about the cylinder. I assume they meant the pod, but we'll see. But anyway, uh, to talk more about it, and again, you can see there's not a whole lot of gameplay here, so this will almost also be sort of like a podcast video where we talk a little bit about survival games, War of the Worlds, etc. But yeah, this was made by one person, the other game made by two people. I honestly don't understand why there are not War of the World games uh, out there uh, made by bigger teams. It seems like such a cool um, setting, you know, such a cool world to uh, have it in. And I am going to be playing the other War of the Worlds games on this channel as well with my commentary. Again, on the Game Archivist, it is without commentary. Um... This will be with commentary, uh, probably next week or something. Then after that, I will be doing the War of the Worlds mod for um, Call to Arms, which is probably the best experience because you have a lot of action there. The models look amazing, move amazing, and you can have some very, very epic battles. So we're basically going from the least interesting games to the most interesting ones, which ironically is a mod in this case. As you can see here, nothing is happening though, so we'll just have to wait. If I go there, the game will say like, TURN BACK! And uh, nothing else really happens there. I guess we can go back to where that letter was, but we'll see. But anyway, to come back to the setting, um, yeah man, I, I, I don't understand. It's, uh, it's a given. In a way, what it reminds me of, and the enemies are obviously very different. But there's a game I played with uh, several of my friends over at Looping Real Gaming, and that game is called Generation Zero. It is a survival game set in the Swedish countryside, and you are fighting against robots. And some of the robots are gigantic, uh, and some of them are very small. But you're going from house to house, finding loot, finding food, and drink. Actually, there might not be food and drinks in there. Oh my god, look at that! Oh, they have arrived. So, what I uh, understand from the design of this, this is actually the design that dates way back in like 1903 or something. Like some of the earliest designs there. Look at them. Oh, he's shooting. He's shooting his little beam. Destroying all those lampposts. These guys don't seem to mind. I'm tired so quickly. But yeah, Generation Zero 
uh, can very much show off how cool it would be to have a survival game for War of the Worlds. Because other people would say, well, what would make sense? Oh, here we go. Next phase. Okay. What do we got? Machines from another world. What the hell was that thing? A monstrous machine that moved by itself? The sound of its heat ray. Horrific! I have to get out of here. That thing could come back. I'll try to survive until help arrives. I hope it. So from now on, you are free to roam. Remember to eat and drink, otherwise you will die. Survive to the end, and watch out for the Martians. So this is basically the bulk of the game. Now we just need to survive. We are free to go wherever we want, and we need to find drinks and food to keep our hunger bar up. Uh, and I think you need to survive for around 15 or 20 minutes, and during that time, maybe every 5 minutes or so, a new phase will start. Um, all the way with a little bit of a spoiler, but the death of the invaders uh, due to, of course, the uh, bacteria here on Earth. Oh, there you can actually see them coming out. Um, this is just a re repetition of what was said earlier. There's a little town over there, so we'll actually go and check what's up. There are some tripods doing some damage there, but we should be able to uh, avoid them. You can now see I can run a little bit further, which is very helpful. But it still depletes quite fast. Anyway, so about the uh, the setting. So I was uh, talking about how a survival game would be very cool with the uh, with the tripods. Um, another game uh, type that might seem uh, pretty logical is a real time strategy game or a grand type strategy game. I know there's a War of the Worlds mods for Hearts of Iron Four. Um, personally, I prefer survival games over strategy games, uh, so a survival game would be cool. But the thing then, of course, is you need to have enough to do. Because the problem with this game, for example, and again, it's a small game, you know, almost like a demo. Here we have some food. There we go. Our hunger's up again. It's just, there's not just not a lot to do. Um, there are some, you know, inhabitants, civilians in the cities or in the towns. They don't do anything. There are no side quests. Uh, I think one thing that would have even um, made this game a little bit more exciting is if there were smaller enemies. Um, and I know that this goes against the lore, but the other War of the Worlds game, which we will soon be playing, actually has... They're, they're sort of like zombie types, but they're supposed to be um, almost like creatures from like invasion of the body snatchers like they've been brainwashed by the invaders and so you have these humanoid enemies that you can fight against or need to evade and having something like that would already make this a little bit more um action-packed because like for example with generation zero the really big robots um you can you can choose to fight them and if you do win you will get some great rewards but they are very difficult and if you're under uh, equipped they can definitely kick your butt um so rather you would probably avoid them pretty much like the tripods here and don't worry we'll we'll go and uh we'll try to get up close with one of these tripods so just need to get another food item Oh, look at that. He's just shooting everywhere. I do like their design. Their design is cool. He just moves through the buildings. That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I just... The War of the Worlds games that are um, that are out there are just not that many. Like I said, if, if even a team of 10 people, just 10 people, will make a game, the quality shift or change will be huge compared to what is out there on the market right now. Like, I'm curious what you guys think, right? So, so the smaller enemy type, like I said, it's not very lore-friendly. So let's say, okay, we won't do that. But how would you say that the creator, you know, can make this game a bit more exciting. Um, you know, what are some, some small quests that you can do? Um, you know, don't expect the world here, but, you know, simple fetch quests in this case would make it a little bit more enjoyable. Like, let's say you are in this, uh, you know, in this town, you talk to uh, a civilian, and they're like, oh my god, I lost my sister, or I lost my son, or 
whatever and go and find them and like you have a little thing and as a reward you get some food or drinks or whatever you know because now it's just me going you know from place to place doing stuff um, or actually not doing any stuff we're just waiting for the next phase um, there are no tripods in sight I'm trying to find another food item. I think in the next phase, they're becoming a little bit more aggressive. A little bit faster. I'm not too sure. But yeah. It's, um... You know. It's a bit boring. Now, the creator actually has a, uh, a long list of games that he created. And some of the other games look, look very interesting and action-packed. Like, he recently made a Dino Crisis 2 survival game. Uh, and a survival game as in, like, more of a horde shooter. Uh, like, a wave shooter. And uh, that actually looks very cool. And uh, the main issue with this game is... Oh, Jesus. Is that it lacks action. Or excitement. Maybe excitement is the better thing. Because you don't necessarily need this game to be an action game. But at least let it be exciting. You know? If you look online or on YouTube and you watch, like, uh, War of the Worlds trailer, there is a interesting-looking, like, trailer that came out a couple of months ago. But, um, it's, uh, there hasn't been any updates in a very long time, so I don't know about that. You know what would be amazing? And I'm wondering if there doesn't uh, a mod exist already. But this would be the perfect mod for Armor 3, don't you think? Now, there have, of course, been alien mods. You know, there have been Mass Effect mods. In a way, I guess the Mass Effect mod comes closest because they have Reapers. And though the Reapers don't look... Well, they look a little bit like them, I guess, with standing on the, on the high legs. But um, they actually have beams that they shoot out. But to my knowledge, and I'm really starting to think because it seems like such a logical thing, there is no War of the Worlds mod for Armor 3. Someone get on that. That is uh, that is a match made in heaven. And uh, I'm kind of running out of things to talk about. <laughs> I'm just waiting for this next phase to start. I was thinking of also filming this for the, the Game Archivist channel, for my Longplay channel. Uh, you know, I, I film footage there to do reviews with. So, you know, whenever I do a review, I film the footage. And then I use that footage for the review. Um... Oh, here we go. Let's not get killed. I don't think there's an... Uh, I don't have an HP bar, so I think if I am get hit by that beam once, I'm dead. Ugh. I'm not sure what it's targeting. Oh, God. The aesthetic of this also reminds me of a small indie game called uh, Sir, You Are Being Hunted. Which is way back in the day, maybe like eight, nine years ago. Which was a survival game on the British countryside where you would be chased by robots that were dressed in like uh, deer hunter gear. Or deer stalker. Okay, I'm actually halfway down to hunger. We need to find some food items. Hmm. Character's tired. Just gonna wash away or lubricate my throat with some Coca Cola. I'm really starting to think like, is there no Armor 3 mod with the. Like I said, there is a very cool um, mod for Call to Arms that works very well. Unfortunately, you cannot have too many of the tripods on screen. It will lag your game heavily. You can maybe have three, four max.
I might also do a, um, a cinematic. Oh, here we go. Next face. Finally. Oh my god. The red weed. S so this is interesting. Um. Next day, the dawn was a brilliant, fiery red. And I wandered through the weird and lurid landscape of another planet. For the vegetation which gives Mars its red appearance had taken root on Earth. As man had succumbed to the Martians, so our land now succumbed to the red weed. Wherever there was a stream, the red weed clung and grew with frightening voraciousness, its claw-like fronds choking the movement of the water. And then it began to creep like a slimy red animal across the land, covering field and ditch and tree and hedgerow with living scarlet feelers. Those machines are using us as fertilizer for the Earth. They want to recreate the atmosphere of Mars, red and gloomy. I saw one of them crawling in the grass. They are small and defenseless. The military can beat them without problems. Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. So yeah, the red weed, you can actually see that our humans, it's a neat little detail on, on this back there. Now the red weed, I'm not familiar too much with the uh, the lore of War of the Worlds, uh, but the red weed is also something that comes back in the other game. Uh, the way it's used there is you collect red weed, and with the red weed you can actually upgrade your skills. Yeah, as I said, the other game, even though it's made by two people, has a lot more to it. And trust me, if you would see that game with that was made by two people, many of you will probably criticize it. Um, but compared to this, that's like a triple A game. I'm just gonna follow this road. Uh, I will see if it leads to uh, to a town. Uh oh, where are you going? Now, it doesn't actually seem to be shooting out its beam anymore, but I assume they're still dangerous. Oh, here we go. But yeah, as I said earlier, I might do a cinematic series of, um, of the War of the Worlds mod. I'm not too sure yet. If I do, it won't be in uh, in December, though. December is a very busy month. We got multiple holidays. I also have multiple birthdays coming up of friends and family. So it's just very busy. Um, it's also the time to kind of unwind. You know, I have Jurassic World Evolution, some cinematics I still need to do. Uh, and besides that, I just want to play some games. I realize that there are plenty of uh, my subscribers who only want to see... Uh, Jurassic World Evolution or some other cinematics, um, but we'll we'll get back to that in uh, in January. You do have to give it the design of these these tripods are very cool. I also like the design of uh, the Spielberg movie. We haven't even really talked about that, have we? So after I played the other War of the Worlds game. The the name of that game is Grey Skies, by the way, if you're wondering. Um, so, uh, that actually got me in the mood. There's a town here. That, that got me in the mood for watching or re-watching the Spielberg movie. Now, I watched it when it came out back in the day and then never really went back to it. And I remember not being all that impressed. I was I kind of forgot why. Uh, having rewatched it now, I can tell you exactly why. It's because of the characters. Uh, Tom Cruise is fine, but there's so much like family drama, you know, like he's divorced and his kids, you know, don't get along with him, blah, blah, blah. It's just very tiring and exhausting and not necessary in this like, you know, disaster movie at all. You know, it's the same reason why also, like, movies like 2012 or something are so stupid because they have that same thing, you know? It's like, oh, we have a man and a woman, they, they were together, now they're divorced, and it, you know, it requires the end of the world to get them back together. So, 
See, Independence Day in that sense is way better. I mean, that has some some romance in it, right? And there's some a little bit of uh, difficulty, like, oh my god, you're always at work. But it's not like super, you know, cliche drama stuff. That's actually a great movie. Playing this now and talking about War of the Worlds actually now makes me want to rewatch Independence Day. Another game I um I was thinking about, uh, which I actually do own. I have never played it, but that is XCOM the Bureau. Um, XCOM is, of course, also a game where Earth gets invaded by aliens. I believe XCOM the Bureau takes place in the 40s or 50s. And I don't think they have, like, giant monsters, like these tripods, uh, but maybe it is kind of the same, uh, you know, the same vibe. Definitely another game that would have the same vibe, but also mixes a lot of other vibes is, of course, Earth Defense Force. Earth Defense Force is most famous for you fighting off giant bugs but it does actually have robots that also do actually walk on giant legs and shoot out like electrical beams um, but that's more of a uh, a mixture of things so if you like giant monster things like Godzilla or um, you know giant spider movies or ants movies or whatever that's sort of that thing like eight-legged freaks And again, I am very glad that I can talk to you guys here about all this because if I have, if I didn't talk, uh, which, like I said, I'm still debating if I should do this for the other channel without commentary, uh, I'll be quite bored. Oh god, he goes, he's coming here. Oh, he's, I don't even know if he can damage me. I kind of want to try it to see, like, walk under it to see if I die, but I'll have to start this whole thing over again. And after this, this is the last phase, so we're almost done. Oh my goodness. Oh! Oh, lordy. Lordy, lordy. I am in the midst of trouble here. I do also have to say this, that uh, what is very welcome are uh, suggestions by you on games that I can play here. Um... I believe Lion 24. Hopefully, I, I I remember to also add this in the intro. But he uh, he talked about um, a game called I think it's like War: The Beginning, and it's this first-person shooter made by a small team where you play uh, in 1939 as the Polish. And sure, it looks a little bit jank and stuff like that, but it it does look very unique and very cool. Um, and I'm just a a big sucker for these type of titles. Um, not necessarily titles where they do something that hasn't been done before, but where they take a topic and for what it's worth, they take it seriously and try to portray something in, uh, in how they, uh, how they want it. There's, for example, also a game called, I think it's called 7554, which is a Vietnam War game, but it is from the Vietnamese perspective but it actually plays in the very first years of the war where you are fighting the French who occupied Vietnam at that that time or colonized it or whatever it is so even though it's a Vietnam War game uh, it's not a Vietnam War like feeling game like you know from uh, from the few games out there There we go. Okay, final phase, people. Chapter 4, Bacteria and Disease. Oh, he doesn't look healthy. He did not get his vaccine. <laughs> Something strange was happening to the machines. They looked sick. They didn't move. Ah, should have got the booster shot. <laughs> ate and drank. They were doomed. They were undone. Destroyed. After all of man's weapons were placed. By the toll of a billion deaths, 
this man had earned his immunity, his right to survive among this planet's infinite organisms. And that right is ours against all challenges, for neither do men live nor die in vain. There we go. Morgan Freeman, uh, very nice song again. Again, I have to do, use some other music over it as well because of copyright. I do have to say this. The animation of them actually falling and dying, quite good. Quite good. But yeah, no, so definitely... Uh, Keep giving me suggestions of uh, games out there. There are some, if you look on Steam, there are some gems. You just need to like sift through all the garbage, like all the, the freaking hentai games and like Battle Royale or Squid Game or Amongst Us clones, that sort of thing. But if you look, you can find some absolute beauties out there. And again, they're not beauties in the sense that they're like, you know, worth triple A quality or, you know, 10 out of 10s. Um, I myself am very pleased with like a 7 out of 10 or something if, uh, if it feels like an honest and cool vision of a game. Like I said that, um, War in the Pacific is kind of a game that's like a 7 out of 10. I had great fun with it. You know, it was only like an hour and 20 minutes, so that might have also been, oh, wait, what? Oh, not this way, turn back. Great. Oh, look how sick they are. Mm. There we go, the end. Thanks for playing. Why, thank you for making it. Again, I realize that this game is easy to pick on. But I think at the base, there is potential. It just needs a bigger team, more budget. So the game just quit right there and there. So, um, yeah, that was a bit abrupt. Anyway, guys, I hope you... I mean, it wasn't the most spectacular video or more, most interesting gameplay, but I hope you at least stick around to, you know, listen to me ramble on about War of the Worlds and these types of games out there. Uh, as always, please let me know any games that you would like to see on the channel. If you know any gems, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.